Well, 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 another one of these episodes. Um, me sitting <laughs> at around 9 pm around and, and just <laughs> recording something. <laughs> That's because I wanna record something. And I think that I'm gonna do the exact same thing as yesterday, which is going through some motivational quotes and then, well, then seeing where things go. <laughs> So yeah, I'm I'm actually not gonna go ahead with those that I'm having inside, you know, that I'm having in front of me, but I'm gonna scroll a bit down. By the way, the link is gonna be down in the description, so if you wanna check out those quotes that I'm going through or that I'm seeing here, then please do so. Anyway, let me see. Never give in. Never, never, never. In nothing, great or small, large or pet. <laughs> large or petty, never give in, except to convictions of honor and good sense, never yield to force, never yield to the apparently overwhelming might of the enemy, by Winston Churchill. Which I, by the way, can understand, and but I do want to underline, except to convictions of honor and good sense, you know, which I think is all about, like, keeping a face, is this how you say it? I think you do. Um, and also, if it just doesn't really make any fucking sense, you know, to just be a stubborn piece of shit and, you know, when you're really trying to make things happen and whatnot and, and, and I don't know, like, when things are just nonsensical, if it doesn't just make any fucking sense, then, um, well, why would you, you know, why would you even bother quite? But yeah, anyway. The work you do when you procrastinate is probably the work you should be doing for the rest of your life. By Jessica Hitch. Hitch. The work you do when you procrastinate is probably the work you should be doing for the rest of your life. Well, I mean, if you procrastinate, aren't you doing any work then? You know, because you're probably procrastinating to work. Really don't get that one. If you're not willing to risk the unusual, you will have to settle for the ordinary by Jim Ron. Which I, by the way, think is the truth. Like, shooting for the moon instead of the stars makes just way more sense. You know, because the chance of you hitting the stars anyway if you go for the moon is way higher than if you just already go for the stars. But vice versa, like going for the stars and expecting to hit the moon is yeah, the chances are pretty, pretty fucking low. So, um, yeah, don't do that. Set high goals, have high expectations, and also work according to them. I mean, of course, you can have a ton of fucking big expectations, but if you don't work on them and or according to them, well, things are not going to be that easy and things are also not going to be that good and well and whatnot, so also look out for that shit. Always remember that you're absolutely unique, just like everyone else, by Margaret Matt, which I think is incredibly important when it comes to nutrition and, um, you know, dieting and working out and health and all of those things, like you are you, you know, and just because something is working for somebody else doesn't necessarily mean that it is also going to work for you as well. I mean, if studies have shown that something works for a major amount of of our population of people, then chances, on the other hand, are pretty big that it is also going to work for you, you know, just because we are all unique, but we still do have certain similarities, you know, and there are still going to be some people that are, you know, quite genetically identical to you, you know, genetically doesn't necessarily mean that they look like you, even though, I mean, there is a possibility of you having a twin without you knowing that you have a twin, like just somebody that looks like you, a doppelganger, basically. But, um, but yeah, you know, it, it really is something to look out for and really something to keep in mind that you are you and you should know best what is working for you and what doesn't or what it isn't. And so, yeah also work on that, and, and I've seen it 
with me and with my backstory and especially when it comes to, to dieting and working out. Like I do really have extremely high volume and I do a lot of supersets and megasets and gigasets and whatever you fucking want to call them because they just work for me. For me, it is not that practical to have one exercise and do it for 12 reps and then call it a fucking day. Nah, I don't like that. I just really want to do multiple things. I like diversity. I like, um, I also like being smart about things so that it fits me, which when it comes to working out means, okay, well, I'm going to hit certain body parts more often because I do want to make more sure that I um, have a certain tension on my muscle and that I'm just um, creating enough of a response from my body. And which is going to include, okay, there is going to be some days where I just don't want to push that hard. And then it is fine as well, because I know, okay, in two days or one day, I'm still or anyway going to hit that body part as well, you know, or again, and so on and so forth. Like just being smart about things. And I've been talking about it before, but just be smart about things. Nothing will work unless you do. Maya Angelou. Yeah. If you don't do anything well, guess what? Nothing is going to happen. I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game winning shot and miss. I failed over and over again in my life. And that is why I succeed. By Michael Jordan. Yeah, I mean, obviously. If you fail more than you win, then there is something wrong. Maybe you're in the wrong place. Maybe you should be doing something differently. Maybe whatever, you know, there's probably something that you should be changing up. But, um, yeah, failure is important. I mean, I've learned quite a lot from failure and I've, I've actually had really a ton of failures in my life as well. A ton of things, you know, what it, you know, what it is about relationships what is about just, you know, some everyday shit as well. Like, okay, I'm not going to use that knife. Okay, I have to use a certain knife in this certain way. Okay, I'm not going to work out in that way. Okay, um, this and that and these and those. Like, there's so many things that we all experience throughout life that we hopefully learn from and hopefully don't do again. At least not to the same degree and or amount and or in the same way. You know, if we just clearly see that something isn't working for us, like, why should we bother to still try it? Doesn't make any fucking sense. It's just a waste of time. It isn't the mountains I had to climb that wear you out. It is the bepple in your shoe by Muhammad Ali. It's the bepple or beeple, whatever, I actually don't know, in your shoe. It isn't the mountain. So it isn't something that is laying ahead. It isn't the future. But it is something that is with you already. Like one could interpret it, I don't know the exact interpretation. I'm probably going to be just so extremely wrong because I'm really fucking bad at interpreting things. But um, on the other hand, or on one hand, it's not the really big thing that is laying ahead of you that's, you know, bothering you or hindering you to, to accomplish something big. But... It most often is something that is already within you, but um, quite often relatively small. And this also reminds me of, okay, I'm just going to go on vacation. You know, I'm going to meet some place, going to go to some foreign country and everything is going to be great and I'm going to feel happy and I'm going to be happy and whatnot. But guess what? You're taking yourself with you. You're going to be on this journey. You're going to be on this trip. And most often it is the case that we are unhappy and or we are hurting in a certain way just because it is us. It's not the environment. It is what we do to ourselves. It is the way we think. It is the way we act. It is something that is just about us. And so changing the place where you're at certainly can give you some, some good time. You know, I don't want to be like, okay, uh, it doesn't matter entirely, but expecting that everything is going to be different no you are still you and it makes a ton of sense to work on yourself and make sure that wherever you are you're happy and you're well off and you're doing fine and you're feeling good 
you know, without having to rely on going on vacation a certain amount of time so that you, <laughs> so that you're not gonna, <laughs> well, get insane or some shit, you know? Carl Jung. Everything that irritates us about others can lead us to an understanding of ourselves. Yeah. And I think in general, being in contact with a ton of people and talking to a ton of people and getting to know a ton of people. Like, um, seeing certain behavior in other people that you really don't like and then asking yourself, am I doing the same? Am I sometimes doing the same? Am I sometimes as well being angry or that angry or acting in that way? Or have I said something in this kind of style, in this kind of manner as well? Do I do this? Is it actually making other people feel like I'm feeling right now? Like there are so many good questions that one can ask oneself to, you know, understand oneself better. And and yeah, I think it also makes sense to kind of write things down in terms of, okay, on this day I felt particularly good. Okay, so so what did I do on this day? Or on the other hand, on this day I, I really felt bad. Okay, what did I do on this day? And or also, um, this person made me feel amazing. What type of person is that? What is that person doing? And I'm just keeping track of things and I tend to forget things very, very easily. And so it's, well, it would really make sense for me to write things down and make sure that that I can understand myself better. Also by, okay, um, which conversations did I have? You know, did I have any conversations? Like just, just tracking things down and also in yourself as well as in other people. Like, okay, this is some behavior and some, some way people are that I just don't like, you know? Am I doing it myself? And so on and so forth. I think you get the point. Norman Vincent Peale. Believe in yourself. Have faith in your abilities. Without a humble but reasonable confidence in your own powers, you cannot be successful or happy. I mean, if you constantly think like, wow, I'm such a piece of shit. Or, oh, I'm never going to be able to do that well. Things are not going to be that easy. And things are not going to even be cool or great or whatnot. You know, it's going to be some not that amazing life, to be honest. And I don't know, like, I think that we know that we all are good at at, at, at least something. You know, there's going to be one thing that you're really good at, whatever it might be. You know, maybe it is eating, dumb as it may sound, but, you know, some people are kind of born for competitive eating. Maybe it is athleticism. Maybe it is talking, maybe it is writing, maybe it is drinking, maybe it is tasting actually. So you maybe should be um, a taster in terms of, you know, reviewing things, reviewing restaurants and, and, you know, all of these things. Maybe you're a good designer, you're having an eye for things, an eye for aesthetics. Maybe you, I don't know, like we all are good at something and we all know that. Sometimes we just, you know, can't decide what it is, but we all know and understand about ourselves that we are good at something, very good at something, you know. I, for example, I've always been pretty athletic. It is just something that I've always done. From the day that I've been born to now, I've, I've always been moving my body and I've always been doing something like that. And so it just makes sense that I'm good at it and that I also enjoy it just because I'm good at it and I'm feeling good because of it, just because I've done it for so long, it just wouldn't make any sense that you hate something that you've always been doing. You know, some people have been singing from really early days on. Of course, this doesn't mean that you should be, you know, having a career in that space. It makes sense because you're pretty good at it and you're talented and whatnot, but I can also understand just doing the opposite and or doing something besides that. I also really kind of fell in love with the thought of, okay, I'm gonna do my creative work in my leisure time, in my private time, and I'm fine with that, you know, so that I can do something else when I'm working, you know, something more logic, something more whatever, you know, just 
just picking things and just listening to yourself and just trying things out and seeing, um, you know, what this is like and how you're feeling doing certain things. But yeah, I think that I'm going to end the episode here with the last quote and I'm going to just randomize that. I'm going to take this one by unknown. Throw me to the wolves and I will return leading the pack. And with that being said, I'm going to see you the next time. Bye.